Greetings guys, it's Irish here. So the past week I have been playing with the binary kernel package for Gentoo. So <clears throat> it uh, so far it's actually been pretty stable. Uh, this is just going to be a brief summary and my experiences and stuff like that. So um, Das Gregor does a better um, <clears throat> thorough overview of it for the most part in one of his videos so if you want to know more information I'll link his video in the description or in like a little thumbnail up on top um, but <clears throat> yeah since uh, this, uh, him actually telling me that they actually came out with a vanilla binary I've been running it for a little over a week now and I must say it is fairly stable uh, however According to the Gentoo developers who run it, it is still experimental. So if you are on Gentoo and you do want to run it, just be cautious. I guess don't run it on a productive production machine <laughs> like I have, um, just in case something does break with your machine. Uh, I have not been able to look inside the kernel if we are able to look inside the kernel. But if we, um, let's go to my boot menu here just to see. So as you can see here it does come out with a init RAM FS for it. Um, personally I don't use that. Um, I usually just do straight up regular old-fashioned dot config system map uh, and I think VM Linus is all I use so I never ever used a init RAM FS ever since being on Gen 2 except for when I did do uh, Gen 2 encrypted because that did uh, require a init RAM FS. But yeah, uh, f in the past when playing around with the kernel, I've always had issues getting my uh, USB card reader, or I'm sorry, my SD card reader to work and also. Um, getting my headset to work and uh, a little bit of the uh, um, the webcam to work too. Sorry, I'm just trying to find a uh, USB or an SD card just to test this out to show you guys. Oh, here's one. Um, but yeah, because there, it's it either changes a lot or different locations. So if we open up Thunar here and put my the SD card in in the slot, this should auto detect it right away. There it is. Uh, it's one of my old SD cards that I had um, my Retro Pi on. Now, if you're not going to see much, but if we do a GUVC view, you can sort of see me. It works, everything so far has worked right out of the box, which is awesome. There is one thing I do want to try, but I haven't been, haven't gotten around to it, is uh, it took me a little bit to get a PS3 controller to work under Linux just because of the proper modules that you needed and everything else like that. But if we do an LS mod on this, let's see what it comes up with. Yeah, as you can see, there's just a ton of modules and everything else like that. Um, I do somewhat have VirtualBox on here, but it doesn't uh, work to loading up the stuff on there. Uh, but as you can see, there is a ton of modules, which I try to limit the modules that I usually hit run running on my own kernel. But yeah, if I would suggest giving it a try, if the one aspect of Gen 2 was trying to configure your own kernel, you and he didn't really want Gen kernel. This is the next best thing. I think if they truly adopt this, then Gen kernel is probably going to go away on the wayside. Um, it is nice 
to have a binary package. I do run what uh, three binary packages here. Uh, one is my Firefox, one is my kernel now, and one is the LibreOffice. So it's uh, once again it's very good. Again, if the kernel was stopping you, um, then I would say give Gen2 a try with this vanilla binary package. Um, I did talk to one of the developers on the security team who also does a little bit of the kernel stuff and they are just trying to simplify the process trying to get um, more security behind it because with the vanilla it does come straight from the uh, the kernel developers and stuff like that I believe but uh, yeah I, I so far it's been awesome I will continue uh, being on Gen 2 for at least probably uh, another couple weeks here again the updates are still killing me but I do have several good ideas coming up um, in my uh, discord server um, I'll just show you what that looks like here um, I, I will put that in the description below but if you just do Irish luck Linux you should see the little uh, my icon and there's not too many people on here I do talk to several but uh, Teo or um, he is wanting to know to how to shrink your partitions and add a swap um, if you didn't do that on the initial installation of Arch, Mint, Ubuntu, whatever, I'll show you guys two ways of how to do it. Uh, one of them is with the G parted and then the other one I'm going to try this but I'm going to try to do this in a virtual box but I will try doing it under parted which is the CLI version of it and show you the different steps of that. Um, I am still on Xmonad. I am planning on uh, let me know if you guys want to see um, my journey in BSPWM. Uh, I, ha I did do a brief two videos on them in the past. One is a brief overview and then the other one is adding a top bar here but I don't think I'm going to be doing a top bar this time around. It's been several years since I've tried it. So let me know if you want me to do a initial uh, how to install it, how to configure it, all that kind of stuff. Please let me know in the or in the comments below. And hopefully you guys have a good week and I'll catch you later.